Four different irons with four very different price points, all from PXG. The question is, what makes them so different? And which one should you choose? So yeah, right now, realistically, the four irons that you can buy from PXG, and uh, well, they're in front of me now, and I've got to say, there's been, they've evolved, there's no doubt about it. Certainly Gen 3 through to Gen 5, there's a considerable change in terms of the way they look, and obviously we've got their kind of cast product, the 0211 DC, which again, is hugely popular. The thing I'm gonna try and find out today, why is there such a significant price difference between those four models? Can you notice that price difference? Are you getting more for your money in going to the Gen 5 than you are to the 0211 DC? And if you are, what exactly are you getting? Now, I think one of the main dividers in opinion on PXG product is first of all, the way they look. They have a very unique look. And I like that first and foremost, the fact that they've designed a product that looks very different to anything else that is out there on the marketplace. The nuts and bolts that I refer to is seen and prevalent in all of the Gen 1 through to the Gen 5 models. But that is, like I said, very much a personal preference. I think with the 0211, the CAS model, it is very much main, more mainstream on what you'd normally associate golf clubs to look like. So the kind of one that will meet the, um, the eye of the majority, I think, will probably be the 0211 DC. And you've really got to buy into how the other models look. And again, that's very much down to your own personal choice. Now, before I go any further, one thing that is a real discussion point for me is the price point. And not just because of how high or how low it is in case of the 0211 DCs, but in terms of resale value. One thing that PXG have done is they've been very aggressive in the marketplace. Each time a new model is released, there's been some heavily discounted products of previous generations. What I'd like to know from you is what are your thoughts and how do you feel if you've perhaps bought a previous generation and seen the price reduced quite significantly? So when you buy a set of clubs, are you being upset at the fact that possibly the resale value is being depreciated quite significantly each time PXG bring a new model out? Or is that something you just do not consider? Let me know in the comments below. Right, now one of the big deals for me personally when I'm buying a set of irons is well it's what they sound and feel like. I know that's not a thing for everybody, some of you on the channel have commented that it makes no difference to you, I understand that and if that's the case then switch off now because that's what we're about to talk about. I'm going to start with the 0211 DC, don't forget this is a cast product. I'm going to hit all four clubs and give you my sort of immediate feedback on how they sound and feel and how they look at a dress. The address, first of all, they've got this bang on. It's kind of a medium top line, wider sole unit, but an address fairly long in terms of heel to toe. I just think it sits in the sort of mass market category uh, in terms of what they're looking for. Let's try and hit a nice clean strike. Well, it wasn't the best of strikes. It's okay, a little bit left. But in terms of sound and feel, I just cannot believe just how good of a job PXG have done in getting a cast club at sort of 70 pound an iron to sound and feel just the way it does. It's always baffled me ever since we've done the review of that product from when it was originally released. I've been very positive towards it, often criticized toward, for, for being very positive towards it, but to try them, it confuses the hell out of me. Into the oldest generation of the P iron that we're going to use, P iron with the same shaft, by the way, um, in each of these next three irons. A lot more compact profile. Top line, again, sits in that sort of player's distance category, I would say. So it's a medium top line, chamfered off a little bit. I won't mention that in the others because it's very, very similar. Um, but let's see again just how these sort of sound and feel. That's it much purer strike than we managed to get with the 0211 but again just now becomes really soft this is the kind of like these are these foam filled um forged face jobs that you know we're all confused with as to how does this kind of like resonate with being a forged iron when it's got some magic formula inside but i just think they did that incredibly well in gen 3 and the sound and feel of that is unreal then into gen 4 I'll show, throw some images up as we're going so you can see a difference in the looks as well. Quite significant move on in terms of what they did in Gen 4. And they did a little bit better in terms of 
a little bit more compact profile than in Gen 3. But what did it do in terms of sound and feel? Because there were some changes in terms of the technology inside. Right, we've got an interruption from the green staff there, but uh, in terms of the sound and feel. Now, what happened with Gen 4 is they just went a little bit more, I think they went a bit harder in the sound. Um, there was a change in what was put inside of these clubs, and I don't know, but for me, they always felt a little bit firmer. Not as soft as the Gen 3s, and for those of you who watch the channel, I ended up... Um, sticking with Gen 3 in the bag, and that was one of the main reasons I did so, because of that change of sound and feel that I was a little bit uh, put off by, if you like. So now into Gen 5, again, very similar to look to Gen 3 to me. Changes again, in terms of the backside of it, I love that visible sort of black marking, suggestion of where the tungsten is uh, in this product, and uh, sound and feel, well, this is just where it just changes significantly for me. I think they made a massive upgrade in terms of what happened between getting the softness that they had in Gen 3 and the speed off the face and the sort of a little bit firmer feeling in terms of what how the ball fires out there. Tungsten, like I said, in heel and toe, we've got these kind of... Um, changes in Gen 4 and Gen 5 in terms of that weighting system at the back, which we'll talk about later. But the sound and feel really ticks every box when it gets into Gen 5. And the biggest game changer for me that I've seen is the sort of ball speeds and the sound and feel in Gen 5. Now, I'm going to give you my evaluation on the four irons in terms of their performance. And to do that, I'm going to throw up the averages of each of them on screen for you now. And uh, I think there's one thing to mention is there's a, the strongest loft by quite a bit is the 0 to 11 DC. And then when the Gen uh, 3 through to Gen 5, there's one degree difference, slightly weaker loft in that Gen 3. And they strengthened it into Gen 4 and Gen 5. And you can see the differences that are made in terms of their performance, in terms of the carry distance. Um, overall, again, just for me, it performs Gen 5, although being the longer iron, without doubt. It's not so much that, it's that coupled with the ball flight, the spin number, the launch angle, the descent angle, the overall sound and feel, just, it does make it the best that iron that PXG have released. There's no question in my mind about that. I wouldn't have said that a year or so, 18 months ago, when it moved into Gen 4 from Gen 3. Unfortunately, it didn't have the sort of progressions that I looked for. I think that, uh, don't get me wrong, very, very good iron, but didn't quite, like I said, make the leap that I would have hoped for that we've now seen into Gen 5. But don't forget, you're paying a huge amount of money to, uh, to have that benefit. Right now, Gen 4s are 170 an iron in the UK, and uh, Gen 5s are 249, so a huge difference. And then you go down that bottom end of the spectrum and see the kind of this 0 to 11 DC at price between 60 and 70 pound an iron, uh, depending on when, you, uh, when they decide to put the price points in. It's just ridiculously priced. I'll say for my US audience that Gen 3 apparently is still available over in the US at around $129 a club, which again, for a forged iron, um, it's just, it's an, it's an incredible price point. But like I said, as far as I can see, you can only get those in the US. I'm gonna leave the review here. I did this video because I've been asked many, many times about how I compare one to the other. And I thought, right, well, we'll just do all four at once. The simple answer and appraisal is that 0 to 11 is, and I always say it, the best value iron on the marketplace right now. End of story. Um, the Gen 5 is a really, really good iron. Ticks a lot of boxes for me, but it's extremely expensive. And then somewhere in between all that, you've got another couple of options in terms of Gen 3, if you can get them, and Gen 4. So, make it out what you will. As ever, my best advice is this. Go out, hit the damn things yourself, and make your own judgments. Right, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Give me the feedback down below, and I'll see you all very soon.